Hey everyone, welcome back to Berlin Noir. To start off today's episode, I just wanted to briefly show a few cinematic shots all the way back from the very first episode of the series. This is back when we started off building the Brandenburg Gate and the Pariser Platz here. And I just kind of wanted to show you know, everyone who's been around for perhaps that long, or even if you have been around for a little shorter, just kind of how far we've come in the series, but also to show you, you know, what this area used to look like and how far uh, we've come uh, in improving it and just kind of building a little more accurately. But also because we are going to be updating and rebuilding this area. We're going to be completely starting from scratch here. As you can see, nothing there, which is also partially why I wanted to show uh, that those uh, cinematic clips because I couldn't really do a before and after uh, because this has been uh, destroyed from... A previous episode trying to plan out future stuff but uh here's also another photo this is actually the very first photo that i posted on instagram that wasn't a teaser and uh i liked how it turned out back then i was really happy how it turned out uh, i figured since that's such an iconic location in berlin that i had to do that right um, but even so there's definitely a whole lot of room to improve so this time around i pretty much made it as accurate as I possibly could. Uh, with this area here in front of the Brandenburg Gate, I wanted to make a little bit larger, uh, a little more grand, I suppose, uh, because the previous one was a little smaller and also there was no road going directly straight. So uh, there was a road going through the Brandenburg Gate, but there was nothing going straight down to the one that would head into the uh, tier garden there below. So I wanted to make sure to include that road there. And uh, also I made it one-way streets kind of as a oddly shaped roundabout more or less, since I do believe that is what it was like uh, back then. But uh, yeah, that actually took a whole lot of time, even though we're only a few minutes into the video. Uh, just trying to come up with the techniques that made it look right and making the kind of roads and intersections as close together without getting, you know, those kind of glitches and such when you put uh, nodes too close together, that type of thing. Um, but yeah, I cut, I cut a, a whole lot of that out uh, just because it, uh, yeah, it took a lot and a whole lot of me just trying things, deleting it, trying things and deleting it, uh, just that type of thing. But uh, yeah, so moving on from there, we are now on to the, I guess, actual Pariser plots here. And uh, I made this also a little bit larger, um, just once again, trying to draw attention to it since it is obviously uh, such an important part of the city. Um, but once again, I used those roads there that didn't have any sidewalks, which I used previously when doing the updated uh, Potsdamer plots. So uh, that worked well uh, back then with that episode. So uh, I kind of needed to do the ty same type of thing here, kind of have just a large road there uh, without, I mean, I guess I could have just done a really wide six lane avenue or something like that. But uh, th those offer a little more limitations and such. But also I wanted to make it a little more close to ha so the uh, cars could actually drive through the Brandenburg Gate without clipping too much. Uh, they're still going to clip a little bit, unfortunately. I mean, I guess I, can, I could have installed those, I believe, those invisible roads. I've never really used them before, uh, so I didn't do that. But, I mean, it's not terrible. They don't clip a whole lot. And for the time being, since a lot of this area is destroyed, and there's really no building standing next to it, as you can see, uh, there isn't a whole lot of traffic right now, uh, which is the only downside, I guess, because, you know, realistically, this would have been a very popular, very busy area. Uh, same thing with Potsdam or Platz. So both those areas right now are don't have a whole lot of traffic right now. But eventually, you know, soon enough, as we continue to build up this area once again, all those cars, trams, pedestrians, you know, there's going to all that traffic is going to be coming back and making the area look a whole lot nicer. Um, but so here I uh, did this technique all the way back at the very start, kind of trying to show the wear of the, of course, the car is driving through, right? Uh, since that is actually how it looked, if you look at pictures and such, there is a big time color difference in the uh, street uh, where the, the cars would be driving. And then in the kind of there's like a central area that's a much different color, uh, which I think cars would park there or something. I'm not entirely sure. 
but I've seen pictures at least with some cars parked. But uh, yeah, I, I think that looks nice, just trying to show exactly where the cars will be driving uh, so it doesn't look like just some big, you know, kind of rectangular piece of asphalt or, I guess, cobblestone or whatever in this case. Um, but yeah, I, I like how that uh, looks doing that. But uh, so this building here, I actually used all the way back when we first did this area, and I think it still works out pretty well. As for as far as just the general architectural style and the facade and everything, I use this smaller building that came with it, basically to extend the roof. Uh, that way, I didn't have to convert the bigger buildings to procedural objects, so that way they're still functional. But also, I don't have to like you know kind of contort the textures or anything like that, so the textures still look pure, and there's no weird angles or anything like that. But uh, so this building here is the Hotel Adlon, uh, pretty much the most famous hotel in Berlin at the time, and uh, I wanted to try and find some building that looked somewhat close to it, uh, so I wasn't just going to use some standard corner building that you know I use all, around, all the way around the city or something like that, but I couldn't really find anything that looked or resembled it very nicely so i decided just to use this one building which is just a three by four and as you can see it was only it's just a one-sided building so i just you know simply use po to basically turn it into a corner building here since it's, it's pretty much the closest thing i could find to resemble it and if anyone could think of something better for this uh please let me know for sure i'd uh Definitely like to replace it with something that maybe looks a little more accurate, but if not, I, I think it's just fine. It's uh, not terrible by any means. But uh, yeah, it's definitely wanted to include it for sure since both back then and today it's a very prominent building and it actually survived World War II. Uh, the bombings, pretty much the entire plaza here was destroyed except the Brandenburg Gate and the hotel, but only a short time later, it actually caught on fire, uh, supposedly by a drunk Russian in the wine cellar. At least uh, that's what I read. Don't know how true that is, but uh, yeah, so that fire pretty much destroyed the entire thing and uh, only left a very small portion of it actually usable until, and basically the entire plaza, Paris Platz, was basically kind of a no man's land, a whole bunch of nothing once the uh, Berlin Wall went up since uh, the wall dividing the Soviet and British sector went right in front of the Brandenburg Gate. So it just left a whole lot of nothing here. So kind of crazy when you look at pictures, say in the 60s and even into the 70s and really all, all the way up to, you know, right before unification, just how there's a whole lot of just empty space here, just green patches of grass, grass a couple buildings scattered about. But uh, yeah, it's pretty uh, pretty crazy to think how far this uh, one location has changed and how far it's come uh, just through not a whole lot, lot of time, through a relatively short period of time. But so here's a nice angle of the plaza here that I found online. And I wanted to show the building on the very far right of this, the one that's kind of only showing half the building, kind of the other half is off the screen. Um, but this is what I'm trying to kind of recreate here with this one. It definitely stands out as kind of being a little more unique in the plaza, not following the similar, I guess, architectural styles of the rest of the buildings in this area. So I'm not entirely sure what this was back then, but it's pretty unique. So I figured I'd try and find a building to replicate it. And this one here, uh, it's some palace building. I don't know what it's called, but I've used it several occasions throughout the city um, since it's fairly generic, but it matches the building that was there I think relatively close it's pretty similar um, not an exact match but it is definitely smaller it's not as tall as some of the other buildings uh, although for the most part the buildings here back then as well as today um, are relatively short uh, they're not very tall buildings there's usually only three or four stories uh, which is pretty interesting if you look at the plaza today uh, when they rebuilt it I guess they had a whole lot of rules that the city made them follow uh, which is surprising compared to the many other areas of the city which were rebuilt and looked nothing even similar to what the uh, 
used to be back then. But at least in this area here at Paris Replots, they uh, made the buildings so they couldn't uh, exceed a certain uh, number, a uh, certain number of meters tall. I, I don't, I don't know the exact number or anything, but it's. Uh, I think that's cool that they. Uh, Although the buildings are of course modern, it looks much more similar because they're all kind of the same heights and width. Um, so I think they did a pretty excellent job uh, rebuilding it um, with, with the modern buildings with those limitations as well though. But uh, anyways, so this little kind of block here is I guess to the north of the plaza here. And this is pretty much the only one that I build, or I should say at least finish, since uh, the one on the southern side, which is between the, the Parisian plots here, as well as um, the Potsdamer plots. Uh, there's kind of what I mentioned, a whole lot of, I guess, government buildings, you would call them. Uh, the like Reich Chancellor building, uh, President building, all those type of like fancy, uh, kind of like palace-like buildings, I guess you could call them. Um, but yeah, those are all kind of in between. So I didn't really build a whole lot on that side just because I figured I'd do all that in, I'm guessing the next episode because I'm kind of planning on building all those kind of fancy government buildings in the next episode. So I figured I want to make sure I can fit in all those and not have to, you know, delete any of the work that I just built. Um, so when, you know, when you get to the cinematics, you'll uh, notice a little bit that there's uh, some, it's kind of just empty space behind it but uh, I did want to at least build something to make it look a little more finished so I went ahead and uh, did this side of the plaza here and uh, looking at the aerial view it looked pretty nice you know uh, I'm you know recently at least for the most part I've been making the inner parts of the city blocks pretty much not be as ugly as possible but to uh, you know, contains some dirty aspects since, of course, it's the 1920s and uh, most of any city in the world during the 1920s was not going to be very nice, or at least I should say it's going to be a little more dirty, not the most hygienic uh, <laughs> uh, cities in time. But uh, yeah, so this is, I guess, returning to what I did all the way back from when I started the series, when I was, for the most part, just putting some trees and paths, making it look much nicer. Since, of course, this is in the very center of the city and it's surrounded by a whole lot of nice buildings. So all the center of the blocks here are going to be pretty nice. So it's a nice change, I guess, compared to like what I said, you know, doing a whole lot of more dirtier, grimier, kind of more industrial type stuff. So now, uh, since we're about halfway through the episode, I want to announce the DLC giveaway that I would like to do for this video. Uh, kind of just to celebrate the fact that we're at episode 50 which is, you know, a pretty big deal. Uh, it's certainly a whole lot of time. We've been doing this for over two years. And the fact that we're kind of revisiting the place where it all started, uh, you know, two years ago with the Brandon Brigade and Pariser Platz, I feel like it's fitting to just kind of say thank you to everyone, you know, for staying around this long, following the series and such. And yeah, I wanted to do a DLC giveaway. So basically, all you got to do to enter for this is simply just like the video and leave a comment. Nothing else. It's pretty plain and simple. Um, and yeah, I'll be giving away uh, DLC. So you don't have to, you know, say what DLC or whatever you like in your comments. Could be on anything, just something in the video or whatever. And uh, if uh, your name happens to be drawn, then I'll reach out and uh, see which DLC you'd like. Or perhaps if by some chance you don't even have the base game of City Skylines, we can definitely get you that as well. But yeah, I just like like I said, just want to say thank you to everyone uh, for sticking around this long for this series. 50 episodes in and over two years of watching this series. So yes, thanks again to everyone. But so moving on, lastly, we're going to be finishing up the episode by working on these two grass patches here that run parallel uh, through the plaza here. And they're pretty simple uh, as far as, you know, kind of the shrubbery and flowers that are on these things. Uh, depending on the pictures that I saw online, and I guess, you know, depending on the period of time, uh, sometimes they had a little more, you know, bushes, small, medium-sized bushes, some flowers type of stuff like that. 
but in most of the pictures I saw, uh, it was very, very simple. Of course, they always had this center fountain here, which actually uh, shot up from the fountain rather than just like kind of a typical fountain that has little kind of spouts spewing water out small amounts. But it actually appeared to be a good amount of water that uh, would shoot up from the center there, which I uh, don't think there's anything animated on the workshop for that because there are some animated water features on the workshop but nothing quite for that. Uh, I know there's kind of like that animated waterfall type thing, which I considered downloading and maybe seeing if that would work, um, but I didn't since I, don't, I couldn't really picture it in my head working. So uh, if there is something that I could use for that, let me know, because I'd love to absolutely have the, uh, the water shooting up from the center of the fountain. I think that'd be pretty awesome. But uh, yeah, so I wanted to start off by adding the fences around here since uh, it's an easily missed detail. Uh, basically in a lot of the plazas and parks in this air in uh, Berlin at the time, uh, especially just on the aerial view, you know, you're, you're never gonna notice a small little fence like this. So you're pretty much relying solely on pictures in order to see this. But uh, even though it is, like I said, a relatively small detail, even in game, uh, it does add a nice touch, kind of an additional layer to simply just having the curb and then in this case, you know, the flowers lining it. But uh, yeah, I was kind of fortunate that uh, since it's a prop version of a fence, you know, I didn't have to uh, clip the fences together or anything at the very end. They happen to fit perfectly in this area. So uh, whenever that happens, that's always a, a very nice thing. Um, so I was happy that happened. But um, so... Uh, starting off, I wanted to, like you see here, just put the flowers kind of outlining the area. Uh, I did two layers just to uh, make it stand out a little bit more. And then also just those four little small circular hedges or bushes. Um, and pretty much all the pictures I saw, those were always there, uh, you know, growing. Sometimes they're a little bigger, sometimes they're a little smaller. And they're even there today, uh, or at least something similar. Um, which uh, is kind of cool that they uh, decided to keep the similar look as to it was back then. But um, lastly, just to add kind of like a final touch to it, I wanted to add this second layer here with just these kind of more shrubby looking bushes or flowers. Uh, I don't, I don't, they're just, they're just uh, I guess, hedges. There's no flowers on these here. But, um, yeah, it's on some of the pictures I saw kind of had that second layer with kind of like that circular thing around the uh, waterfall there in the center. And I really like how that looked. So I figured I'd recreate that similarly. And yeah, I think it really turned out pretty nice. Um, it's very, very simple for sure. But uh, simplicity is sometimes pretty nice, uh, quite nice indeed. And uh, yeah, it, it definitely really draws this area together, really brings it together. And uh, as simple as it is, it looks, I think, pretty nice. And also, since it's uh, pretty much an exact re recreation of what it used to look like, uh, that's you know, also uh, a nice added touch there as well. But uh, yeah, I just simply copied and pasted it to the other side since you know, no need to do that twice. But so that's going to do it for this episode. Hopefully you all enjoyed it and enjoyed the upgrade and recreation here of Producer Platz and Brandenburg Gates. Uh, don't forget as well to leave a comment and like the video. That way you'll be entered into the DLC giveaway. And if you're interested in supporting the channel even further, you can check out my Patreon for exclusive perks as well as access to the Berlin Noir save game. Uh, so next week we'll probably be working on the government buildings directly next to this. And I'm looking forward to it for sure. So I'll see you all next time.